Okay, okay. So, you know, the, so I'll give you a little bit of background. One, one, you know, like a year ago, I was driving down the freeway and, and I hear this, this radio report about uh, the Google diversity report and the diversity gap, right? And of course, uh, African Americans and Latinos were highly underrepresented uh, in the Google workforce, uh, particularly in tech positions and leadership positions. And, you know, those tech positions are going to be the higher paying positions. Those are the programmers, the engineers, uh, and the leadership positions, of course, are upper management. And so, uh, you know, it, it sparked my attention because I was thinking Google's going to build a campus here in uh, Los Angeles. They wanted oh, to really? be, yeah, they wanted to, or that, at least rumor had it, right? And they wanted it to be as big as the, the campus they have up in Northern California, which is tremendous. And I thought, geez, you know, they're in LA and they're struggling with the diversity uh, goal. And I thought between Mario and I, that's how we started working together. As a matter of fact, I started thinking, you know, Mario's got the pipeline into the youth, you know, Latino youth and African-American youth. And he has a, a slick way of attracting, you know, their attention and the parents involvement through the soccer program. You know, I just came out of the corporate world and, you know, I interviewed a lot of people. I trained a lot of people and, uh, you know, I figured I have the corporate know-how to prepare them so that, that when they, you know, that one, they would apply more for these types of jobs, you know, because I don't think they're even considering themselves adequate and then, you know, get, get the foot in the door, actually help them get the job. Right. So, you know, in the process, of course, the community has improved because you have, you know, the youth that is getting trained, you know, the best and brightest youth getting trained, you know, business skills, home economic skills, organizational skills that, you know, they rarely get. So even you'll see in the data, even the ones that get into college, a lot of them drop out, you know, so, you know, because they're just not ready for that game. And then the ones that do graduate uh, college aren't applying for those types of jobs, you know, uh, or those that are applying aren't getting them. And so, the question was, what do we need to do to, to change that, to change that reality, right? And so, you know, these are the, the stats. And so what you see, and we'll start with the, the, your vertical axis, your, your Y axis there, and you'll see that uh, there's four race or ethnicities represented. You have Asian, you have Black, you have Latino, and which actually they use Latinx. Have you ever heard of Latinx? No. So Latinx is, I, I guess, the, the, the new trending term uh, to, to represent Latinos. It's a genderless term, right? So it's not Latina or Latino. It's just Latinx. Uh, right. so, so just have, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're already a little bit behind in the times because of our age group. But, uh, and then there's white. And then for each race uh, you have, or ethnicity, you have two categories, Asian rep, and Asian hire, black rep, black hire, and so on. And rep stands for workforce representation, right? And hire stands for percent of new hires, right? And so I'll, I'll break that down a little bit more. So let's take a look at the Asians, right? Asian rep uh, has two bars, a blue one and a red one. And the blue one indicates that that's data from 2014. And the red indicates that it's data from either 2018 or 2019. And because I had different years, I just called it end year value. Uh, but so it's past and present, right? So four years, five year difference. And so you see that in 2014, 35% of the entire uh, Google workforce was Asian. So that means out of every 100 employees, 35 right. are Asian. And now in 2018-19, you, you see that their representation has grown by 10%. They now make up 45% of the whole workforce. Uh, and the hire, same thing. In 2014, out of every 100 hired, about 39, approximately 39 new hires for every 100 were Asian. And then in 2018-19, that's up to 52%. So out of every 100, over half are going to be Asian or have been historically, right? As far as uh, yeah. this, this is concerned. So let's go down to Latinos. Oh, there, there I have some, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just clicked that. Uh, I just click right now and I see that I, I have the, the definition of Latinx in case people. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, the data I'm just showing, you know, 
part of the, the data that I got from the report, just in case anybody was wondering what's your source, that that's what it is. And so we see Latinos, right? Latinos, I'm looking at the hires, right? The new hires. So in 2014, out of every 100 new hires that Google made, uh, five were Latino. Four or five years later, 2019, we see that, that that really hasn't changed. That stayed the same, right? So you can't in increase the diversity at your, uh, within an organization if you know, the, the higher rates remain the same, right? So something's gotta be done to push that up. Uh, and you can see because if you look at the Latino representation, uh, that's only gone up by 0.9%, so not even 1%. Right. And because there's also the attrition, right? People, people quit throughout the years. And so yeah. if you're not retaining them and you're not hiring, you know, a, a, in greater rate at greater rates, then that's what you're going to see. And so and you see there, those are the changes in representation for blacks and Latinos. And so, you know, as I move on to this, this next chart, what you're seeing here, the first one that runs across the top, uh, it has, you know, I got this from census data from 2000 and the head projection for 2000 to 2018. And this was for the year 2017. It shows that out of the 325 million or, or close to 326 million residents that we have in the United States, 250 million were white, 43 point, you know, 43 and a half million black, 4 million Native American, 19 million Asian, and then you go all the way to the far right, and you see that Hispanics make up 59 million. So there's 59 million Hispanics living in the United States presently. You're around that number. Uh, but if you know, if you look at this next uh, table to the bottom left, you'll see that this is how Hispanics represent, you know, identify themselves uh, by race because. Latino Hispanic is not a race, right? It's yeah. an ethnicity. And so, and we have all kinds of races representing us. And so you see that 38 million or 65% of Hispanics identify themselves as white. 27% uh, represent themselves as some other race. Uh, and then as you go further down, uh, like black, you know, they 2.1% represent themselves as black. And so, but when you add them all up, that's where you get your 59 million, right? And so the next chart to your right with the, the red uh, boxes, that's the count of people by race once you separate the Hispanics from them, right? So that leaves blacks at 42 million, whites at 211 million, Asians at 19 million, and then go down to the bottom to 59 million Hispanics. And so that's how they make up the percentage of the population. So I have blacks at 13%, whites at 65, Hispanics at 18, and Asians at 6%, right? So it starts raising some questions, right? So if Hispanics, Latinos are only making up 5% of the Google workforce, but they make up 18% of the US population in total, you know, that's where you start talking about being underrepresented, right? Yeah. And so and so what does it mean to be underrepresented? I'm going to shrink this thing okay, here um, and move it out of the way. Okay, here we go. So to be underrepresented means that a group whose numerical composition within an organization is disproportionately lower than its numerical composition within the population at large. And so here's our Google data again. Here's our US uh, population data once you separate the Hispanics from the other races. And so if everything was equally distributed and there was no uh, underrepresentation, so presently what we're seeing is Google out of every hundred that it hires, three are black, five are Latino, 44 white, 52 Asian. But the population shows that out of every hundred US residents, 13 are black, 18 are Latino, 65 white, six are Asian. Then you see that uh, Latinos are underrepresented in new hires by 13 people for every 100 uh, new hires. Uh, blacks down by 10 and whites underrepresented by 21. And you see that, for, you know, that Asians are actually overrepresented by 760, yeah, by 46 people. So they, they, you know, they get the six 
jobs, right, that, that would make them, you know, properly represented, and then they get 46 more jobs, uh, you know, and so what does that mean? I mean, I don't blame, I don't blame the agents. They're, they're doing the right no. thing, right? They're, <laughs> yeah. they're getting the jobs, they're getting the jobs, and, you know, businesses are going to hire the people that are going to make them profit. That's the bottom yeah. line, and so, you know, so it's not on them, you know, it's not on the agent, it's not on them, it's, it's on everybody else trying to figure out, you know, what, what is it that, that needs to be done, and so, why does it matter? You know, if, if you bring this to other people's attention, why does it matter? Because remember, we're talking about jobs at Google in the tech positions, right? So those are the best paying, outside of the management positions, those are gonna be the best paying jobs. And Google isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And they're, you know, they're, you know, one of the most powerful influential companies in the whole country, in the whole world, as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, the government's afraid to, to t take them on head on, at least, you know, like congressmen and, you know, uh, congresswomen, you know, very few will, will fight these big uh, tech companies. I mean, just out of the fact that they have so much power and influence, they could, uh, they could make, <laughs> they could make your, uh, your website show up on page 10 of every search, you know, and <laughs> nobody goes past the, uh, you know, and so that's where you want your children to be, a, you know, to be at, to be a part of it. As you talk about, you know, artificial intelligence and the control that these large tech companies have, that's where you want to be represented, right? That's, that's you know, that's where I want my kids to, to work at, is some place where I feel like they're going to be, have some security for a long time. They're going to have a voice to influence, you know, I mean, the, you know, techs, you know, tech companies and their software and their smartphones and devices, they already run our, our lives, right? So yeah. it'd be foolish to not want to be a part of that. Um, I know some people are going to say, well, you're part of the, the new tyranny. I'm like, Hey, look, all, all I know is when it all adds up and you look at median household income, which is what I have here in front of you by race and ethnicity, you'll see that Asians, those, mo you know, overrepresented at places like Google, cause it's not just Google, it's, you know, all Silicon beach and other tech companies are, you know, their median income is $81,000 per year. Whereas Hispanics, Fifty thousand dollars per year. All right, that's that's how it. That's what it translates to when you look at well, why does this mean anything to, to me? Well, if you want intend to be in a place where the income is higher, tech jobs at tech companies is the place to go. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't 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 uh, be afraid to stop me if you have any questions about this data. And so, I started looking at some data before I offered any solutions. Uh, you know, I started looking at some data, and just looking at you know, and I'm, and I'm headed towards looking at university data, college data, because let's, let's, let's be honest, not everybody is Steve Jobs and Bill Gates that can just, you know, drop out of college, you know, and just start working on some project and go ahead and start, you know, a large tech company. Most of us yeah. go <laughs> get a university degree. Uh, they're going to be looking for that in the job application. And they're going to be looking at what you study as well. And so looking at, but, you know, I started with, high school and, and looked at, well, what, what, how many people do we have in high school? And 15.1 million, you know, and, and you know, I, this is, this is funny. I, I spent hours last night looking for data that said, okay, how many Latinos graduated from high school? How many whites graduated from high school? No. <laughs> they, they give you rates. They give you percentages. Uh, you ask how many freshmen entered high school that were Latino, white or Asian. They, they, they won't give it to you. You know, and I got a feeling that there's a reason for that. They're trying to hide something from us. You know, why not give us that data? But when you look at dropout data and graduation data, you see here that graduation rates are, are high for everybody. I mean, they're, they're, or the flip side of that is we have fewer dropouts than ever, especially for Hispanics. We used to, you know, have the largest dropout rates. And so out of every 10 uh, kids that enter ninth grade, uh, for high school, eight of them will actually graduate with a high school diploma, uh, which is, you know, just one under the Asians, uh, same with the blacks and one under the whites. So, you know, that, that gap has narrowed tremendously, which is good news for Latinos. All right. And so I asked myself the next question, you know, are, are we underrepresented at Google then because we don't send enough kids to college, right? And what this graph is showing you is that it shows you from year to year 
what percent of high school graduates by race and ethnicity immediately went to college uh, right after, right? So they, they graduated in June. By October, they were enrolled in a two-year or four-year degree uh, university. And you'll see Hispanics back in the year 2000 uh, was less than 50%. Uh, 2016, they're at 71% with the Hispanics, right? So they're in the mix. And, you know, but I look at the Asians. I don't even compare the Hispanics to, to the whites, you know, because, I mean, the, the numbers show neck and neck, right? You know, similar yeah. graduation rates, similar uh, enrollment rates. But Asians, from the moment that we started collecting data for them back in 2003 or 2004, they were already above the curve. Yeah, they were already, they're always on top. <laughs> always on top. And, you know, they, they peaked at 90%. Uh, but they're at 87%. So that's not that's nothing to sneeze at. And I'm just wondering, you know, because you always, you know, at least when I was going to school, there were always these big arguments and debates about culturally biased tests and, you know, institutional racism. Uh, Asians haven't seemed to be affected, haven't seemed to be affected by that at any point, even though, you know, they're a minority group. They also have a population, you know, significant population that lives under the rate of poverty. Uh, they have a significant rate of po you know, population that is working class, you know, similar struggles as our own. Yet somehow they figure out how to get most of their high school graduates in the college right away. All right. And so that raises a different set of questions. Uh, but then I thought, OK, so it's not because we're not sending enough of them, enough Latinos to college. Let's look at who's enrolled in college, right? And so these are actual raw numbers that you see on this graph. And so you see that in 2016, we had a total of 16.9 million people enrolled in college, right? So about 17 million people going to college at the same time, two year or four year. Um, and you see that in 2016, whites, uh, they made up 9.1 million out of all this, out of the 17 million. So nine out of 17, uh, people were white. Uh, but you see Hispanics, nothing to sneeze at. I mean, in 2000, in the year 2000, we were below 2 million enrolled. Um, it was actually 1.4. And now, as you look at 2016, 3.2 million Hispanics uh, or Latinx enrolled in college. So, you know, that's, uh, that's 9 to 3. That's one third, right, in comparison to, uh, to whites. And more than uh, blacks and more than Asians, right? So you, if you take a look at the little chart, the table at the bottom left of your screen, so you see those are the representations. Those are a million. Uh, and we talk about equal representation, right? Uh, equally distributed representation. So let's take a look at that. If you, t if you take the 200, the 9 million uh, white students and compare them to the general population of white people, so that's 211 million, they make up 65% of the US population. When you take the 9% out of the 17 million that are in college, they're only making up 53% or 54% of the total college enrolled population. And so if you were talking about equal representation, then you see that they're actually underrepresented by 11%. You know, if everything was the same, then th there should be 65% enrolled in colleges as well and there isn't right and so latinos you take a look at their level of representation in the population and and compare it to their level of representation in the universities and they're actually slightly overrepresented at 18.9 percent uh you know i didn't know this data I, I, this was unheard of for me i mean when i was in high school and i was in college we would always talk about you know the achievement gap uh Obviously, there's still an achievement gap if you start looking at grades and uh, what they're studying, I suppose. But in terms of numbers, mission accomplished. You know, all that, uh, all that fight for, uh, for uh, what, what were they calling it? Uh, affirmative action. Uh, I mean, you can, you can split those numbers and find some other discrepancies. But hey, if you look at this in general population terms, blacks are the same, 13 and 13. And Asians, almost the same, too. Almost seems by design, doesn't it? I mean, that, that, that you have that, but that's what it is. And so it's not because they're not in college. So they're graduating on time. They're, you know, where Latinos are graduating on time. They're 
you know, going to, to college right away and they have, you know, fair representation at the university level. And so that's not the cause. But now let's look at what, how things look like a few years later, right? So you're graduating from college, I mean, from high school, you're going to be somewhere between 16 to 18. I mean, you can go up to as high as 24, which is why this just looks at, you know, what happens, you know, and this is the same year, so it's not the same students, but it's a snapshot of what those students that went into high school at 2000, I mean, went into college in 2016, what the future is going to look like. So for Latinos, we had seven out of every 10 uh, that graduated going to college. Well, what does the picture look like a few, a few years later? So there's a, your seven out of 10 that immediately went to college. So, you know, a few years down the road between when they're between the ages of 20 to 24, now you're down to half, right? And the other half is neither in school nor working. So think about that. If you're sitting in a room with five people and I mean with 10 people, Latino, ages 20 to 24, you can roll your dice and expect five out of, out of those 10 to not be working or not going to school. So what else could they be doing? Is that you or me? Uh, no, that's a uh, street sweeper. <laughs> okay. Uh, with with African Americans, it's the same. You know, they, they lose two. They started off with six going straight to college. By the time they're 20 to 24, only four are left. Asians drop two as well. So there seems to be a pattern there. But because they started so high at nine, they still have seven, you know, still fighting a good fight going to college, right? And so you got to look at you got to look at that. Uh, if you look at the actual bars for Hispanics, you see that 36% of those that are not in school, not in college, I mean, not in not at working, are poor, right? And there, there, you know, there are conditions that come with that, right? The 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 opportunities and the outlook is is bleaker than for non-poor. So you look at the percent that are non-poor for Hispanics, and that's 15% of all 20 to 24-year-olds. But, you know, for, for Hispanics, for us, that, that doesn't mean, you know, rich. It doesn't even mean middle class. It just means you didn't make low enough of an income to yeah. report. But you can still be, you know, near poor, near broke. I mean, you, you know, we, we, we talk about our own personal struggles, you know, and it's like, you know, we're, you know living on the edge, right? Uh, you know, one, one, one bad uh, accident from being right and poor. So it's not like the outlook is that much better for those Hispanics uh, that are that are not in school and not at work, you know? And so now we look at associate's degree. Okay, so now we're looking at these kids, you know, or the, the snapshot of the future of what things are going to look like for these kids when they're 25 to 29. Okay, so for Latinos, you know, when 20 to 24, only half left, right? That, you know, and that's only half of the ones that we actually sent to school immediately, right? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, it includes all of them. So this includes the ones that didn't go to college immediately. But you have, you know, you have half that are not in school, not at work. And then you have half that may be in school or may be working or maybe doing both, which is probably the likelihood for most, right? Yeah. And look at, so that's five for Latinos seven for Asians, four for uh, Blacks. And then you think that, that at this point, the system had done its part. It separated, you know, the weak from the chaff, the, the weak from the, the strong. Uh, anybody who stuck around was college material. But now we're looking at them with associate's degree. That's a two-year degree. So out of those five that were left, you know, you know that had the, the possibility uh, for Latinos, only three got at least an associate's degree, right? That means that those other two uh, are at work now, right? Uh, with the Asians, no change. Not a single thing has changed. Those seven that, that stuck uh, in school at least, now are, are at least working. Oh no, these are, these got an associate's degree. They at least, so yeah, they, they you know, going- So they continue. Work, they continue, yeah, all the way through. Uh, and then for blacks, they lost another one too. So, you know, we're, we're tied with the African-Americans, you know, out of, out of 10, three uh, 
have stuck it through at least to an associate's degree. Doesn't mean they all got bachelor's degrees. Doesn't mean they all got master's degrees. Doesn't mean they all got doctorates. Just associates. Okay. And so let's take a look. You know, and so you know, I started asking my question, just being cynical. You know, what is it about the Asian is that that they you know they survive and they you know succeed and you know, so maybe maybe they're just smarter. Maybe it's in their DNA. You know, and uh, I, you know, I know I know. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> it has to do like I don't know maybe like they, they're more like I don't want to say hardworking because that could be anybody yeah. but like uh like my neighbor across the street she's Asian and uh -huh. like like she tells me like all she has to go through just to put her daughter in college like you know she has she works uh she does nails oh you know in, you know it's funny too because <clears throat> I, I've grown up in, been surrounded by Latinos, going to school with Latinos my whole life, you know, and uh, now I, I taught, you know, large populations of Latinos, and I went to school with a lot of Asians, too, because I went to, to good schools, right, to high school and, and college, and, you know, and I was surrounded by a lot of Asians because I was in the programs, you know, I, I took all the math and science programs, engineering programs, I did classes, I was always interested in that stuff, and part of me always said, you know, fuck that shit, you know, I'm going to be in those classes. They're in those classes for a reason, you know, and I hear what they talk about and I hear what my, my hint to talk about and what they're aspiring, you know, what their priorities are. I'm going to go hang with those that are, are you know, are looking towards the future, you know, yeah. and uh, I, you know, I was tempted to bring up a lot of things, you know, call out a lot of dirt, but I said, this is not the appropriate time or place to do that in this presentation. I just want to create awareness right now, you know, but, yeah, no, I know it's not in their DNA, but there is something that they do different, right? And the, the, the thing is, we never ask, you know, we just go about our, our own business doing our thing. It's like, you know, and you're, you're telling the story already. I mean, I know what the story is and you're telling it, you know, it's like this woman is busting her ass to keep her kid in college. And that's what it takes, you know, and, <clears throat> you know, sometimes other people bust their, bust their hump too, but it may not be for, for that reason. And so... Yeah. I think it all uh, sometimes it just depends on the kid that's going to college, like you know, does he want to yeah, go or he doesn't want to go. <laughs> all ba all babies are born equal, you know. Yeah. All, all babies are born not thinking about college, and somebody has to put that in their head, right? Yeah. Somebody has to demonstrate that to them. Uh, you're doing it right now. I mean, you're you're like doing everything you can to put them in the best schools, you know, where you know that they'll actually talk to them about college. Whereas, like when you shared your experience, there wasn't a single person that brought it up. You know, and so there's a reason why you're not sending them to like your, your your local public school, correct? Yeah. Right. No, that there 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 are reasons why, uh, but you know, it's it's always been taboo to talk about these things, and I'm trying to bring them up because they need to be talked about. You can't talk about and you can't move forward without actually, you know, let's call our stuff out. Uh, but anyways, moving along. Okay, and so now we're looking at you know percent of students of, of residents uh, of the ages 25 to 29 that actually got the bachelor's degree. All right. So associates was, was one thing. Bachelor's is another thing, four years. Uh, and so this is where we were at, at the associates or higher level, three out of 10 for uh, Latinos, seven out of 10 for Asians, uh, three out of 10 for Blacks. And so when we look at Latinos, out of those three that at least got an associate's, two went on, two got the bachelor's actually, one got the associate's, right? With the Asians, six, six out of the seven got bachelor's degree. Only one, you know, got the associate's. And three of the, uh, two of the three got bachelor's, one got the associate's. And I don't want to say just an associate's degree, but there's, there's a significant difference in income between someone with an associate's degree and someone with a bachelor's degree. And my thing is, if you're gonna make that sacrifice, right? Remember, we're talking about, you know, for example, this mother who is busting her, her tail to get a, to keep her kid in college. You know, anybody pursuing an associate's degree, and I think you'd be like, you know, the first, uh, you know, testimonial to talk about, you know, how difficult it is to even just take a, a course over the summer, right? If there's a sacrifice that you make to like your your stress level and your uh, your comfort and your time you know spent 
but if you're going to do it for a two, de two year degree, by, by the end of two years, you figured some things out. You got systems in place. Your kids are older. You got family that's helping out. You figured some things out. Stick around for the other two, you know, yeah. and this, and this is why, I mean, if you look at median income, so now we're looking at 25 to 34 year olds by, by race. Uh, I'm sorry. No, just uh, by education level uh, and how much they're making. Uh, well, this is the median income, which means half of the population is making more than that. And half of the population is making less than that. But if you go to so one, two, three, so your third bar shows that anybody with a high school degree, median income is going to be $32,000 a year. Right. And so then you compare it to someone with an associate's degree and the difference in income at the median level over a year, not that much, 6,200. Yeah. That that's, that's, that's going to go away in taxes. You're just going to get taxed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and, and there's a good likelihood that you still might not be, be working at a place that is going to give you medical benefits, uh, 401k. Believe me, I, I, I you know, as an HR person, HR director, I, I, I heard about that all the time. I saw it all the time when I had new hires, but if you're at a bachelor's, the median income in 2016 was 50,000. I mean, we're talking about people 25 to 34. So, you know, some of them are, are, you know, a lot of them are still going to be single, right? Some may just have one kid. Even in California, at 50 grand a year, single income, you can, you know, you can take care of your family. You can still put some money away. You can get your medical benefits. Uh, I know, you, you know, you'd be in a slightly different situation, but, you know, fortunately, you have uh, John still, you know, strong and, and sticking around that, that might buy you that time to, you know, make that higher income, right? And so... Yeah. That, that, that was kind of the part I wanted to show you just because you, you got to look at the numbers and, de and then decide, okay, what's worth the sacrifice? Because this is year over year, right? So over a span of 10 years, uh, if you compare associates, that's a difference of $12,000 per year. Over a span of 10 years, that's $120,000 more in your pocket, you know, or in your bank account or paying for college for your kids, right? That's, that's how it, you know, and then you, you get, you know, you get your, your kid, uh, the college the tax deferred, uh, um, you know, the tax deferred uh, college fund, and, and you know the, the prospects are looking pretty good. You know that I know I did as soon as my kids were every time one of my kids was born, the first thing I did start a college fund. You know, and twenty five bucks, seventy five bucks, and uh, it adds up. You know, especially when the economy is strong. You show this to Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, no, you know this. This is this is the idea. I'm showing. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna post it up on YouTube. I'm gonna show it to the oh, world. Oh, okay. So then yeah, I'm like it. I should show this to Jonathan so he can actually see like. Hey, oh. that's, that's you're, you're hitting the nail right on the head. That's why I'm doing this. You know, it's like, I'm not getting paid by anybody to, to promote this. It's like, come on, people, let's wake up. Rasa, you know, we're like, yeah, you know, we're, there's more of us in school, more of us graduating, but we still ain't getting the jobs, yeah. right? Because so many of us don't make it all the way to the end, you know? And here's when you look at household income, right? So this is not uh, 25 to 34 year olds. This is looking at homes, right? People, you know, and, and you can see the... Uh, Graduates high, this is looking at what the median, the median household income for people with bachelor's degrees, right? And you see in California, you know, where the economy is stronger than in the rest of the other states, it's the seventh largest economy by, in the world by itself, you know, the median income is $355, $850. So that's, you know, that's your, your house plus your, you know, your savings, uh, insurance, that kind of thing. Uh, it adds up, right? So this is why, you know, making this data accessible for to you. So let's, let's take a look at some of this stuff and see what, it, what it, if we connect the dots, what does this all mean, right? And so, because remember, the big question is, why aren't Latinos represented in places that matter? And for me, places that matter are places like tech jobs at Google, all right? And so equal opportunity is not the issue because we're, we're represented properly there. Uh, numbers aren't the issue. We're triple the Asians and, uh, you know, 50% higher than uh, African Americans. Uh, you know, the, well, not 50%, but I, I would say uh, a million more than African Americans, what I was trying to say. Uh, you know, and the, the thing is, for me is the formula already exists. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to spin our wheels. It, the Asian population they're overrepresented by 767% at Google, you know, for tech positions. And most of them, 
go to college immediately. And most of them graduate with the bachelor's or, or above 50% graduate with the bachelor's in comparison to our uh, 20%, you know. So they're, they're, we don't have to go anywhere. We just have to ask. We just have to study and find out what they do. And, and you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll remain objective and scientific about it, but you nailed it right there when you called it out uh, the first time. And I wouldn't say it's hard working, more hard working. I think it's what are your yeah, that could be anybody. <laughs> what are your values? I think the value system is different, you know, and and so, but we, you know, we'll study it. That's that's going to be my next presentation because believe me, I already I already read a study back when I was in Berkeley, you know, about why you know Asians did better than all other races at Berkeley. You Do know? you want to show this presentation? Uh... Well, I'm going to show this presentation. But I'm going to make a different presentation about you know that that is going to study why is it that Asians. Go, you know, go to college more, and uh, you know, per capita. And uh, doing a, like a voiceover? No, no, no. Well, yeah, no. I mean, I'm gonna put up data just like this. Oh, okay. You're just gonna talk. Okay, I see. Yeah, no, and I mean, that's probably video online. I'm sure there's video online oh. <laughs> already. If I find it, I'll share it. But my my point is, so like for example, this is what I'm saying to everybody. Like you just said, if you have a neighbor that lives right across from you, that is, you know, showing you the examples, why not ask her some other questions and say. Tell me more about what you do every day to keep your kid in college, to have sent her to college. She actually graduated. Oh, graduated. All right. But yeah, she and she's in... working for CDC. Who, who, who CDC? Oh, the, uh, the, the jewelry channel, right? On no, TV? no, CDC is a... Uh, oh, CDC, the, the, how, the disease control? Yeah, uh, uh -huh. control, the right? guy's government. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, there you yeah, go. like... Uh, so guess what? If she's working for the Center for Disease Control, what do you think her degree must have been in? Uh, I never asked her. But, but what do you just, if you had to speculate, it would probably be in something scientific, right? Yeah, like science. Yeah, because what she does, because I asked her the other day, so what did she do over there? Because she moved to uh, Tico, mm -hmm. up, up north. Uh -huh. And she says she does is um, testing food. You know, like sometimes on news, they say, oh, uh, lettuce has E. coli, or oh, don't okay. eat this, don't eat that. That's what she oh, does. Yeah, right. like something like biochemistry, you know, yeah. or genetics. Well, not genetics, but yeah, more like biochemistry, genetic engineering, uh, stuff like that, right? And, and so, you know, but, uh, you know, I want to keep on going here just so, you know, and so I, I point to this one particular number. So Latinos have gotten better at graduating uh, their high schoolers. We've gotten better at sending our kids immediately to college. You know, seven out of every 10. But by the time that uh, they're 25, 29, uh, two out of those seven dropped out. We allowed them to drop out, you know? And that's, that's the point I want to make is this, they didn't get kicked out. You know, they dropped out. And it's going to be for a variety, you know, we're going to be here a variety of excuses. And I call them excuses on purpose because nobody else has them. Or, you know, they have them, but not in the same numbers. Right. It's, so it's like, oh, you know, didn't manage the money right. Didn't, uh, you know, got homesick. Something happened with the family. You know, shit like that happens for every family. Right. That's what, you know, that's something I've really learned a lot of just doing this work with you guys. It's like, I thought I had problems. Damn, everybody has problems. Everybody needs help, you know. And so, <laughs> but we enable it, you know, we forgive it. Right. I bet you if you talk to your neighbor, I bet you she'll tell you it was um, unacceptable for their kid to drop out, for her daughter to drop out of college. Oh, I'm sure. And my parents, were, <laughs> my parents were the same way, you know, they they were like, you're not coming back here. You better, you better survive. You better, you know, make it happen. And so guess what I did? I made it happen. It was that simple. It really is that simple. Uh, not in every case I get it, but it'd be 21%, you know? You know, that we started off with seven, it should have, you should have ended with seven or, or, you know, six, you know, some fraction of it. Because if you look at, if I, you know, direct you to this, the, the last column here on the top uh, chart, by the time it's all said and done, out of that 1.1 million that were enrolled in college for Asians, 8 million, I mean, eight, 800,000 graduated with a bachelor's degree not just an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. Whereas Latinos, we started at 3.2 million. You know, 3.2 million. If it was 800,000 out of every million, that would be 2.4 million, like the Asians, right? But 
Instead, we're at less than a million, 0.9 million, you know, 900,000 versus the 800,000. Those are, those are, those numbers are embarrassing, you know? And so we got to ask ourselves, what is, what happens? You know, we get we, 3.2 million in college. That's great. But then by when it's all said and done, they, you know, they, Under fell, a million. they fell off like flies, you know? And so, you know, but yeah, there I say, by the age of 29, most of those kids that graduated from high school for Asians that went to college, got their bachelor's degree. And so that starts explaining a little bit what's happening at the Google level, right? It's like, you know, but at this point it would be like, you know, neck and neck, right? 800,000 versus 900, not that everybody's gonna go to apply for Google, but that's the, that's the idea. But then now we look at, okay, those who got associate's degrees, all right? Associate's degrees, how many of those associate's degrees were for things like, you know, office administration and how many of them were for STEM fields, you know, uh, degrees. So that's science, technology, mathematics in 2015, 2006. So what this is showing you out of all the degrees that were given, all the associate degrees that were given that were in STEM fields, just STEM fields, nothing, nothing else. What percent of those went to the different ethnic or Asian groups, I mean, or, or racial groups. And you can see that the lowest number were given, to, were, were awarded to Hispanic students. All right, and when awarded doesn't mean that somebody <laughs> chose to give it to them. That means the Hispanics that went to get an associate's degree, very few went into STEM fields, even though they're the largest group. Yeah. The smallest group, well, not, <laughs> not the smallest of the major groups, right? So those first four, mm -hmm. Asians, you know, the small group of Asians that were there got the largest percentage of degrees. So that's those are percentages. Science. Yeah, so in science and math and technology, and then they added. Yeah, I, you know what? Uh, like um, Jonathan, he, uh, when he was, we were looking for high schools, he uh -huh. got um, invited to uh, apply at this school called CAMPS, uh -huh. uh, California Academy of Math and Science. Yep. So we went to look at it. And it was like all Asians. It was like math and science. Did he go? And this, no, he had it. Uh, they only were picking one to two kids from each school in the Los Angeles district. But see, so that's it was the, really, really hard to get it. He qualified, but they're only picking one kid from each school. But you, but you, oh, so you did apply. You yeah, did apply. but uh, they only pick one kid. And then like you went inside because they gave us a tour. Like we yeah. went in and basically like almost every kid that was there it was asian yeah and see like, I, wow like how these kids getting here and like then you ask yourself what's wrong with that picture right i hope yeah. you ask yourself but this is what this is this is what you saw what you experienced there without any number any data is how things translate to the the differences in median income and the differences you know in representation at places that matter like tech jobs at google you know and uh I'm sure there were other Latinos that were invited to go that probably didn't, didn't go, right? And yeah. my thing is, look at this data, people. This is the future of your children if you don't start making better decisions and going to these things, you know? And whatever the backlash is, whatever, you know? This is, this is, how, it, this is how it pans out, you know? So Yeah, move. John is like, okay. He's like, what? Is that where they get all these Asians to come to this school? Because it's a math, it was a math and science academy. No, see, the, the thing should be, you know, when we can talk about this later, it's like knowing that, knowing that these numbers and, and you know, with people saying that they care about it, politicians and the corporations here and that they want to diversify, how come nobody stopped and asked themselves that people that have control of those kinds of things and asked themselves, what's wrong with this picture? Where are the Latinos? You know, yeah. uh, if even to just tell me about it, I'll call them myself and say like, Hey, wake your ass up and go to this thing. You have to go. And more importantly, the one that the one family that did go, how about you learn a little bit more about them and see it, you know, if you can create a spot. We can do a fundraiser, whatever. You know what I mean? But let's not let the one that shows up turn turn back and, and not not have the shot. Because now that you see what the future brings, you might be you might think twice about, you know what, I need to fight for my kid to be involved in these kinds of programs, or we need to ask for more programs that reach out, do the reach out a little bit better, you know, and we have to take responsibility for also knocking on doors and say, hey, 
let let me show you something and look at how important this is. And by you going to this, you change the, the numbers. You change the possibilities, not just for your kids, but for your neighborhood. You know, because that's 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 how it works out. That's how it translates. Now, but check this graph out. This is bachelor's degrees. Okay, so at least for for the purposes of this presentation, you know, a bachelor's is the highest level of achievement, uh, probably the minimal level of achievement that you need to qualify for a tech job at a place like Google or any other corporation in Silicon Beach. And this is out of all the bachelor's degrees given in the United States that were related to science, technology, and mathematics, 33% went, the highest you know, rate went to the smallest group, the, the, the least populous group at the, enrolled at the university, you know, of the four major groups. And uh, Hispanics are 15, white is 18, black, you know. You know, and, and I, and, you know, having been a student that, that went, you know, was in a lot of classes surrounded by all Asian, maybe one other white, maybe one other black, never another, another Hispanic, because I was a math major at Berkeley, and that was like, whew, I had Rare. Still, well, yeah, it, it was just, it was just a really hard course. It was, it was, it was hard for anybody, right? It was so everybody was intimidated by it. But let's look at who was least intimidated by it. The Asians, yeah. right? That's what it boiled down to. It's like, oh, you know, everybody would say, You're a math major? Oh, I was terrible at math in high school. I'm like, you weren't terrible at math. You had bad math teachers. You know, we can do better. You know, but my thing was I'm sticking to this one because believe me, there were tons of times I wanted to like just quit and, and major in something less, but I was like, nah, this is going to pay off in the future. No, and and it has. Even though n none of my titles, you know, you know, after college, well, except for the math teacher one, had anything to do with math. But I was using, you know, my math mind. I was, you know, studying math makes your mind stronger. Studying engineering classes makes your mind stronger. Uh, it challenges you in ways that, you know, a literacy, a literature class won't. And so that means that's that's how they're thinking. That's that they're not afraid. They, you know, the Asians, they're not afraid. They they take those classes and they get most of the degrees. And so, yeah, I said, here's the group that gets it. You know, we got to start asking ourselves, what do they do? And instead, these are the kind of jobs that we get, right? So this is Latino Labor Force Deployment, right? This is from the Department of Labor. This is where employ, these are the trades that are employing the majority of Latino workers today. All right, so this isn't, you know, me making this up, this is coming straight from the Department of Labor, you know, using census data and it's construction, repair and maintenance, you know, your laundry and laundry services, administrative support, you know, we're, we're, so we're buildings, we're making buildings, we're fixing refrigerators and we're throwing out the trash, you know, and then a few in healthcare and a few in transportation and warehousing. That would be where I worked at last. That's a, that's where I was at, as a matter of fact, because I was, you know, we're well, not transportation, but warehousing. We were, you know, we were a distributor of uh, hardware. So, you know, not doing not doing too good there. Uh, here is the, you know, business ownership by Nativity and Hispanic origin and everybody and everybody else. And you see that for Hispanics, foreign born foreign born entrepreneurs that start their own business, you know, outnumber the native born, right? So, you know, I started thinking, are you sure it's the, the ones that are coming in that you want to kick out? Or is it the ones that are here who become, you know, complacent, entitled, you know, that are born here who think that, you know, somebody's got to do it for them, waiting for the government or the corporations to diversify. It's like, nah, you got to get off your ass and you got to get to work. And you got to start building something, you know? And so, there it had, you have it, and then look at the the Asians. I mean, Jesus, this is a percent of the total population. They are the ones that are born here because they have parents that, you know, kick them in the shade that probably start the business and then hand over the business. In many cases, that's what I observed growing up. Uh, that's how it works out, you know. So in any case, we got a lot of work to do. This one, uh, we will skip those. But check this out. This is another one that caught my attention, which was okay. How many are in elected office? You know, Latinos. And so this is the numbers from 1996 to 2011. And so you see, there's been a growth of 53% of Latino representation in 
uh, political office, elected offices or appointed offices. Uh, and so, you know, one other thing that I used to hear a lot growing up and when I was in college was, you know, the lack of diversity in government. And that's why policy, you know, we, we, we have to suffer through policies that were biased, prejudiced, racist. And that was why the country wasn't a condition that it was. Well, the, con the country, you know, as far as a lot of people are concerned, are not in great shape, is not in great shape. And there's a lot more of us, you know, in there now. Are we part of the problem or are we part of the solution? You know, and at the rate that we're going, uh, we've got to start being careful about who we point fingers at. But in the end, so, you know, when, when speaking to you about my role or my, the, the purpose of my organization with respect to Mario's is this is the ultimate goal that we want to set up. So I'm, I'm trying to do the corporate pre preparedness part, right? The business skills, the business training, mobile devices, all this so that we can grow by 2025, the number of, or the percent of the Google workforce or any Silicon, you know, Silicon uh, Beach uh, corporation up to 18% by 